Okay. All right, I can see you there. Okay, okay. Uh, let me get my uh, headphones connected to you somehow. Yeah, yeah. How's that? Yep. Sounds good. Can you hear? Okay, yeah. I can hear you. I see okay. you too. All right. Cool. And there's cool, no, uh, there's no feet, there's no um, uh, echo chamber or anything. What's happening? Great, great. Not much. Uh, I just got in. I'm in. I'm on campus right now, so I was able to get a room, so uh, we could chat and uh, okay. just connect. Cool. Um, explain, explain that to me, because is is MKG Chicago based on campus? No, no, it's not. Oh. No, uh, MKG Chicago. I'm renting out a facility at a Comprito BJJ. Okay. Uh, that's where we're at right now. Uh, okay. I, I go to college uh, periodically, so I'm at Northwestern University right now. Uh, I just got done with a uh, Chan Buddhism class, and we actually talked a little bit about Bruce Lee, which is kind of cool. Oh. So, yeah, it was so, kind of so, neat. Okay, so you, you're a student of Chan Buddhism? Um, I'm a student of religious studies, and I have a Chan Buddhism class. Wow. And, and it's really cool because we use the uh, other class I have is... Uh, mysticism and spirituality yeah. and the actual phrase of it's like a finger pointing to the moon was actually in the assignment right. unknowingly to the instructor who I unfortunately had to dominate the conversation <laughs> because it because of the enter the dragon quote and we just took it from there it was cool right. it was oh, really yeah, cool. that's, oh, that's yeah. very cool how did yeah. you how did you get interested in that uh, spirit spiritual stuff um, I always was kind of into that. I mean, I was raised Catholic, and my grandmother was a very religious person. But I think what happened was that through training martial arts, yeah, I just somehow it just started to develop more and more. Uh, I'm from Chicago. I live in Chicago, especially the south side of Chicago. There's not that much of a spiritual aspect of it or a new age aspect of it it's no you're not that's not yeah. what south side chicago is known for no exactly <laughs> and uh um it, it the there's a lot of uh there's catholics there's it was christian based there but the other stuff that i was kind of into really wasn't around there and i was really into and still am uh into classic rock and when i heard george harrison's all things must pass album uh, you know, My Sweet Lord and What yeah. Is Life and everything. And yeah. uh, I did just kind of like, man, this is it. You know, I mean, this guy just, you know, he really helped to tag me along to the religious aspect. And then as time went on, um, you know, you just kind of learned it. And then in my beginning phases of training JKD and Kali, uh, we weren't really into that because uh, I was, uh, right. I first started training with a guy named Dean Ricardo. Who says hi to you, by the way? Oh yeah, uh, give him my yeah. regards. Oh my yeah. God, what that's that's an old timer right there. Yeah, he's my he was my first uh, uh, coach, okay. um, and then we you know we hooked up with Paul Vunak and PFS, and right. there wasn't a lot of spirituality there. So uh, <laughs> well, you know, it was, it was a different a hard kind core. of spirituality. Okay, okay, we'll go. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you know, not not a derogatory thing at all. I'm just making right. a point. Yeah. Um, but then as I, when I kind of started getting back into this, back into the 2000s, um, I hooked up with uh, Sensei Eric Paulson, a very spiritual, very spiritual guy. Yes. And then I just really jumped into it. And okay. I just, I'm a, I'm a martial art nerd and I'm a religious studies nerd. I mean, anything yeah. I could find, I take it. Well, uh, I, so. I, I, I don't, I don't think the two are that far removed at all. When you really, no. when you really get, down to it right right they're not exactly. that far removed yeah no um the surname charles where yeah. is that from uh i was adopted uh my i my mother who raised me is my real mother okay. but i was actually adopted so my last name actually is piesco uh i'm half ukrainian quarter german quarter polish no wonder you're in jkd <laughs> I'm a JKD <laughs> man, yeah. Blood and yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. I'm a mutt, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. 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 All right. So um on your on your website, uh -huh. there's there's uh there's a whole list of, of people 
that you've trained with and who you're certified by. So yes. I, I wanted to go, I wanted to get the, the chronology of all that, but okay. your very first martial art uh, endeavors were with Dion Ricardo. Correct. Okay. Correct. So, so you, you weren't like a Taekwondo kid or. No, I actually, I got into, um, I was a fitness. I, I always got into fitness. Okay. And so when I was in high school, you know, and everything, I liked bodybuilding, Schwarzenegger, Sakon, and the Barbarian. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got the same story, so I won't repeat that, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the same thing, you know. It's all true, but, you yeah. know, it's redundant. But then, uh, again, here's another same story. In an article in Muscle and Fitness, Schwarzenegger talks about Bruce Lee and what a great six-pack he had and uh -huh. all of that stuff. So kind of, hey, who's this guy, Bruce Lee, you know, and then never really found anything. And then I ran so into... This oh, was right. this was this was around what year? When was this? That? Was uh, nineteen in the mid eighties? So okay, okay, mid eighties, yeah. Okay, and um, but then I around eighty nine or ninety, I can't remember. That's when I had run into Dion. Ricardo. Okay, got it. And and I was into I was heavily into weightlifting at the time. Okay, just that was my thing. I was the typical, you know, had the T Michael T shirts, the tan and the hot pink and. Uh, <laughs> You know, all, that, all that stuff that was that, I was into that, you know. Um, it's embarrassing now, but, but whatever. But um, he had walked up to me, he asked me if I worked out, you know, and I was like, Yeah, you know. So we started talking, and he told me, you know, about JKD and Kali, Bruce Lee, and all these things. Brought up Guru Dan, mm -hmm. and I just didn't have much faith in any of that. And then we went to go to, the, to a gym and worked out for a little bit, and he just told me to throw a punch at him. Mm -hmm. And when he did, I threw a punch and it was probably like six million dollar man going super, super slow, you know, da, 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 you know, because I had bigger arms and things. Right. And he gave me a good he gave me a good thing on the bicep. You know, gave uh, me a nice nod on my bicep. I was yeah. like, man, this guy who wasn't, you know, a bodybuilder or a big muscle head or anything, man, the guy <laughs> just took out my arm that I could curl, you know, eighty five pounds with. You know what I mean? How did you know I was sold at that point? Okay. So that's yeah. how I got into it uh, initially. Yeah. Well, Dion, yeah. Dion, Dion's a good salesman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's uh, he's he's done really good for himself uh, yeah. with with his businesses and everything for sure. There's no doubt. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right. So okay. So so I'm gonna go through the list here. Uh, okay. At the top, it says senior training officer of Progressive Fighting Systems. So that was it, my yeah. That's so that's Paul Vunak's organization. Correct. Yeah. Uh, I'm and that not, was, I'm, that was through Dion initially. Initially I met uh, Paul through Dion okay. and then eventually I just kind of went to, you know, you know, people grow, we grow up, we grow yeah. apart type of thing. So I trained yeah. with Paul for a number of years. And um, so I became that I, I'm not affiliated with them indirectly anymore. You know, I've okay. got my wings, I'm a senior and I just moved on. Right. Um, so I moved on from that, but then he was my first, uh, him and DM were my first delve into, you know, JKD. The JKD uh, world, right. Yeah, okay. the heart, so. Okay. Um, and and then I guess um, senior instructor under Tom Cruise is related to that also. Correct. That's, that's, the, whole, right. that's, that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Correct. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Senior instructor under Larry Hartzell. So tell us tell us how you branched into the, grap the JKD grappling. Well, that was a really cool transition because um, – it was interesting because I came in at the tail end of the JKD era where the instructors were almost on a quest to prove how effective JKD is. You know, I was from that okay. era, era where, you know, everybody's, you didn't have tournaments or anything as much and everybody's out getting in the fights. Right. You know, trying to prove stuff. Yeah. Um, and I had never met Sifu Larry when I was around Paul back in the day, but we always heard about him. Mm -hmm. you know, the mm -hmm. original JKD street fighter, he was, you know, that was one guy that, Paul would literally say he was afraid of. Yes. He would not, you know, Paul's not afraid of anybody, but he was afraid. <laughs> he, he's afraid of him. He was afraid yeah. of him. And yeah. he said that with very much, with very much respect and anger. And I say that uh, in, in no derogatory way towards Paul, because um, Paul's a tough guy too. But anyways, uh, so when I got back into the training, hardcore, I wanted to, I still, you know, train with Paul, but I wanted to branch out. So I figured, hey, let's check out C. Fuleri. And uh, so I did. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, joined the organization. We go out and do privates with them, go do seminars, and uh, got to meet Simo uh, uh, Debra. Yeah. And just really was a great inspiration. I, I wish I had known him 
in his heyday. Right. You know, I, I, I met him, you know, unfortunately towards yeah. the end. But he was still just so, I mean, he would do these traps on me. It was just phenomenal how he would do it. And being, you know, starting to on the decline, unfortunately, just still had it, you know, mm -hmm. just had it. Just, yeah. Uh, and, but you, um, you were, you, I mean, you, but you were a bodybuilder, so you were big enough to train with him. Well, at that time, right, exactly, yeah. Right. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I wasn't lifting back then. I mean, I started to kind of, you know, taper off from that. When I came back, I was getting back into shape. But I wasn't into the bodybuilding thing as much as I was into the arts, you know. Right. Okay. Uh, it was just, yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. Senior associate under uh, in Asano. Well, that's that's under, we we understand that. Pro coach, <laughs> pro yeah. coach STX and CSW under Eric Paulson. Was that through Larry? Was Eric? touring with Larry at the time or what? no 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 actually no? uh what happened with that was that was when I started um branching out to different you know people that I heard okay. about okay and Sifu Larry was one of the people that told me to train with Eric Paulson because of the grappling right and it's an interesting thing with that because I really wasn't into the MMA thing I really was just into the whole street fighting thing you know yeah. being with Paul and Sifu Larry yeah. But I did what I was told, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And when I went to meet uh, Eric Paulson and I met Tanya at the same time at the Insano Academy for a private, uh, I don't know what happened. There was just an automatic connection there, whatever it was. And, and I all of a sudden got into MMA. I mean, got yeah. into the training aspect of it. And I realized that it's a, an important skill set yeah. to have for a self-defense situation especially in this day and age have, have you seen have you seen my dialogues episode with eric yes yeah okay yeah. that's I why did, i i I'm, a, I'm in shock i'm on here because i'm on the same thing that eric was well, so. yeah, be, well, listen my job is to bring everybody to the forefront okay cool. well, thank that's you. my job <laughs> okay. um, i was not aware of the depth of his spirituality yeah i yeah. was not aware yeah. But it makes sense now. I always thought 20 years ago, Eric has a touch when he puts his hands on you. Mm -hmm. For me, it's abject hopelessness. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like, all right, I cannot go anywhere that this guy cannot control me. Right. Yeah. You know, and I think with him in particular, it's not just the physical ability, I think a lot of it is the mental cultivation that mm -hmm. in, in, in which he has, he has, you know, um, indulged yeah. over, over the years, right? I would say so. I, I, I remember when the first time I did the private with him and I rolled with him, and I'm not, and by any means, I would never even necessarily consider myself a grappler, you know, yeah. per se. Um, but he, you know, he's just like, a, he's like a bear, you know, he, he, he goes wherever he wants to go on you and he's kind of inflicting some sort of pain along the way. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. um, and then even like with stand up, I had like kind of went up to him screwing around pretending to do cheese with him. And then he just goes, da -da -da -da, and he just bummed me, took me down doing cheese. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Just, in two seconds. It was yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> whatever. Um, right. Yeah. It's a humbling experience. But that was a really interesting thing because it kind of brought me into the because right now I have a class, uh, Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah, and Kabbalah, Kabbalah sorry. Yeah. And I, I just, I got to talk to him a little bit about it because you know, he's heavy into the Merkaba meditation. Right. And uh, that they're both uh, related. One yeah. came from the other, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of conversation coming up with that, with him pretty soon, I hope, anyway. Okay. So, but yeah, that's, um, and I, I just, I just, there's a connection I've, I got with him with that and it kind of helped me get through some things and yeah. Tanya's great you know uh, there's the combination of the two it's just been a really great association mm -hmm. with them okay all right um instructor level one under uh Sifu Rick Fay. yeah uh that's been that was uh instructor level under him and getting the branch being a branch school and everything right Rick Rick the great thing about MKG and 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 the people and 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 Coach Rick is, for one, he's close. 
Yeah. Okay. Because I'm in Chicago. He's in Minneapolis. So he's close. So it's a lot easier access. It's cheaper to whole thing. Yeah. But at the same time, there's a, a sense of he just knows everything. <laughs> I, I don't know how to say it. I mean, and, yeah. he, and it's, you know, Guru Dan knows everything, but yeah. I don't have access to Guru Dan like I do to Coach Rick. Right. I can, you know, text Rick. I can, you know, I have the manual. I can do a private right away with him if I get mm -hmm. a chance. You know, I'm having him out in a couple of weeks out here in Chicago for a yeah. seminar. Um, it's very, e there's a lot of easy access. And anything you want to know about martial arts in our family and any person, whatever, their skill set, whatever, he knows it because he's been yes. there, done that. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a, there's a quietness about this guy that has really, he, he doesn't say much, but when he says it, you get it. Mm -hmm. if, if you understand, he's not, he's not a yeah. talker, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and he's the one thing that really turned me on to him was he says that everybody has the right to learn this art. When he said that to me, that really turned it out because there's some people who just want to do it. It's just kind of cool. They just want to be part of something. They're not that athletic. They never mm -hmm. will be that athletic. They have certain physical limitations, whatever. Not everybody can run five miles a day and, be mm -hmm. in, and get in that type of shape, but they still want to experience this. Right. And, he made, and he made that okay Yes. to do that yeah. without any type of judgment on it. Yeah. And that's what I like. I, I, I it, find him to be the the consummate instructor. Yeah. You know, yeah. and then the mm -hmm. consummate instructor of instructors. Yes. If 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 you get what I mean. I remember yeah. I I met him I met him in eighty three in my first week with uh, Sifu and Asano. And wow. um I yeah, I have a picture of him doing a reverse a disarm and reverse wrist lock on Cliff Lenderman. Okay. And I took that picture because I was like, wow, there are guys out there who know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, yeah, and, and yeah, so yeah, he was yeah. he was um he was always he was always one of those. Um uh -huh. okay, let's keep moving down the list. Green sash under uh Sifu Francis Fong. Yeah, here, here's another guy that yeah, just I, um I it's hard to put it into words with with uh Sifu Fong because I don't get to spend as much time as I would like with him. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, not that he's limiting it. Well, that's because there's only one of you. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but I mean, it's just, I, you know, he has such an energy about him. Yes. And he's such a positive person. Yeah. And he's a tough guy. Yeah. You know, he's not somebody I'd want. Another guy I would not want to mess. He's another guy that Paul Wunek used to have great adulation for him. Mm -hmm. um the trapping is unbelievable and he makes it uh he makes wing chun so functional yeah uh and but i i, I almost i'm embarrassed to say that i wish I, I don't train with him as much as i should because of other things that come up and i know it's a priority issue and it's an excuse right. uh but hopefully you know things will work out to where i can you know start getting more into it with yeah him. Um, but he's just another, he's just another, it's another skill yeah. set. You know? I, I, I mean, he's another one that I, my first week with Sifu Dan, my second yeah. week was with Sifu Francis. And uh -huh. I remember, I remember reading uh, in the, in the profile for that uh, camp that his branch of Wing Chun under Ju Wan was particularly combative. Uh -huh. That's that's what I, I remember. Re I remember um, re reading that. Have you ever, by chance, met Jason Lau? Mm -hmm. Sifu Francis is Wing Chun senior. I don't think so. No. no. Okay. No. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Instructor level two in uh, Warrior Alliance Dirty Boxing. That's uh, Daniel Sullivan's thing. Yeah, I uh, I uh, dabbled a little bit with that with him. Um, I like what he does. Yeah, uh, he's a, a a nice guy, great great uh, person, great instructor. Yeah, and it just turned out to be, and it's a nice simplified, different version of Panatukin. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And when I say simplified, I mean effective, efficient. Uh, yeah, but um, and again on a time issue, there's only so much you know I can do uh, as one person. Right, and I just kind of unfortunately had the I don't want to say cut my ties because I didn't. There's no issues. Right. I just haven't been able to get into it. So as much okay. as I, I did when it first came. So there's not, I can't okay. really say 
too much about it outside of that it's cool and it's great and it's right just part of the skill set yeah okay uh member of team maximus muay thai yeah rich coach rich is uh my current muay thai coach okay. and uh maximus muay thai uh my coach rich is uh He's a huge inspiration. He he got into Muay Thai, maybe I think it was two thousand eight or nine. I'm not sure if I get if it's in mm -hmm. that area. He's mm -hmm. been you know has been doing martial arts that long. Yet he's just been uh, just a huge inspiration. Um, he had a, a rough uh, going as once his son uh, was born and passed away yeah. real early. That's what yeah, I, I don't know. If yeah, Maxim and, and, and Maximus was his son's name, correct? Correct. Yeah, yes. and that's yes, why yes. you know this whole thing built from that. And yeah, I have a you know a personal a personal uh, soft spot like most people do, but a special thing when it comes to kids. Yeah. And him as a father, you know, no 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 parent should ever have to bury their kid. Um, and so when that was going on with him, and I had met him once because he came to a seminar when I had uh, Greg Nelson coach. Greg Nelson okay. out, and okay. I met him there. And but I seen his uh, things on Facebook, and it was just so inspirational to see a guy who just is fighting through that. Yeah. And then decided to turn that into this legacy that he's building for himself and the gym and his right. family and for his son. So yeah. right then and there, it's like I got to meet this guy. And yeah. from that point on, I just. You know, I, I train with him. I do privates with him and stuff. And he's just an inspiration okay. know, for the yeah. training. Because, because you know, it's 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 going to be obvious that the omission mm -hmm. on your list when it comes to Muay Thai is Ajarn Chai. Yes, unfortunately, you know? yeah, and that is not by that's not purposeful. <laughs> Trust of course me. Not. Right. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, no. I I have I have joined the World TBA. Okay. Um, I began started. I just I, I've gone to a few seminars with Master Chai. Mm -hmm. uh, he probably doesn't know who I am yet. Uh, I am starting to now on my quest to start to delve more into Muay Thai before it gets too late because I am getting older. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, you know that's that's a thing. I, I was at the uh, Masters Conference at in Atlanta. Okay. Uh, and trained with him there, so okay. um, it, it's on the list. <laughs> okay, it's, yeah, it's on the list. And, okay, so on the list also, uh, Adjarn Greg Nelson. That's self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, uh, Guru David Hatch, who I think is on here watching. So shout outs to him. Hi, Sifu. Hi, how are you? Um, so, <laughs> okay. but so that's well, yeah. You're all you're all up there, neighbors to each other, right? Yeah. Yeah. You He's know? in Michigan. Yeah. 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 He, I, I did a few privates with him and, and, and his wife, and he's just another guy who's just so humble and so sharing when you ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, I don't want to embarrass you, Coach, uh, but anyway. <laughs> he, it's just a, a nice uh, group. Of, both of them are just very nice and yeah. happy, and I just love them both. Just, yeah. You know. Okay. Um Keith well, the one thing me. that got me, oh, yeah. Go let me back up on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one thing that really got me with uh, Coach Hatch was I went to my, it asked me like 10 years ago at uh, Sifu Fong's old gym. And I went, this is before he had uh, the association. It was a different type of association. Right. Yeah. So I went there for the camp and uh, it was my first one. And Coach Hatch asked me to partner with him. Okay. So I, I was in shock because it's like, you know, he knew who I was, right. but you know, he wants me to partner with him. He really, you know, it's like, I, he didn't have anybody else. So he, got, he took me, he had, you know, but whatever. It was still yeah. cool. <laughs> That's yeah. how I, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, Keith Hackney, who, who's informed me, the giant killer. Keith Hackney. Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you guys remember UFCs, the old UFCs. I'm not old um, enough. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the old, the UFC at night, the old uh, back, the first one or two, I think, yeah. he fought Hoist Gracie in the UFC, okay. and he fought this big Hawaiian guy. Uh, oh, another, yeah. I, I, I trained Kimo, at his gym. For, I think. Kimo, yeah. yes, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I trained at his gym. Uh, the, another, he was another guy who can just snap you in half, and is just the nicest, kindest guy. I, it's kind of interesting, because you're going down the list, and you're probably going to get the Tony Cicchini as well. Exactly. So I'll, I'll, I'll put all these guys yeah, together. Put up, yeah, put all them together. Let's, I'll, I'll sew all the grapplers together, and then Comprito, of course. And I looked at it. If I roll with Comprito, it's like I'm rolling with an anaconda. 
Okay, you don't know where he's at until it's too late. Right. When I roll it with Coach Eric, like I said before, it's like a bear. You're not going to yeah. win, and he's hurting you every inch of the way. Yeah. Tony Cicchini was the same way. Uh, he was even worse when it came to putting a hurt on. He didn't want to mess around with the rolling. He just mm -hmm. went right to it and got you, um, which is rough, too. Yeah. Uh, Keith Hackney, on the other hand, Keith Hackney, it was like Robuck. You cannot bend. You could not get anything on this guy. He could just lay there like a piece of steel, and no matter how hard you tried, you just couldn't get to the guy. Wow. So these guys were just – and he had stand-up, too. Yeah. Um, you know, I – I, I'm really just blessed to be with these these guys to be able to say I even shift their hands, so to speak. Yeah. I mean, I've trained with them, but yeah. And John Manos, the Jet. Johnny the Jet, yeah, uh, he passed away last year, like uh, last August, not not last August, August before. Okay. And uh, he was my boxing coach. Uh, I met him through another boxing coach named Asher Esau, uh, and. A little emotional with John because John had a rough. John had a lot of demons. Mm -hmm. uh, as a young kid, yeah, and a lot of demons, but just a diamond in the rough. This kid was the epitome of a boxer, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. He was just. Uh, he could have impressed Bruce Lee, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the wow. kid just had it. He just had this ability. He just had it. Uh, he was a pro boxer. He had a pro fight and everything, and then he just he went down the wrong path, unfortunately. You know, what's interesting about that is that he shares a moniker with mm -hmm. Benny Urquidez, mm -hmm. who's also known as the Jet, of uh -huh. whom Dan Inasano has said when it comes to physical attributes that Benny okay. the Jet was the closest thing he had ever seen to Bruce Lee. Wow. I, yeah. I've never met that the man. I wish, I hope I do someday. Yeah. Uh, him I never met. But John was, uh, John Manos was, God bless you, brother. Uh, he just is... I hope he's found peace. That's all yeah. I can say. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So now we got to talk classical uh, okay. Chicago JKD. Okay. What do you have a connection to the Degerberg Academy? Uh, I've gone there a few times back in the day. Uh, Deanna okay. brought us there. I had actually seen Master Chai there. Okay. Uh, I had seen uh, Guru Dan. I think it was one of my first seminars to see you right. know, we were doing when I first got into it, right. um, which was just like, I, I mean, I, I remember I turned to Dean, I was like, man, I, how am I going to get on this? Is, <laughs> I, 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 I can't do this. I want to go lift. I, can, you know I, mean? <laughs> you know, I, I can't get this, you know, swinging these sticks around, banging myself in the head, you know, yeah. I, I can't do this, you know. But anyways, <laughs> obviously, you know, it's, it's gotten better, hopefully. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's, um, but I never really trained there or anything okay. like that. It was not, you know, so. Okay. Um, so well, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out some old Chicago names that that okay. I know, and you tell me. Uh, Rick okay. Solo. Uh, I know who he is. Okay. I've never met him. Um, those guys were up north in Skokie, up north. They weren't in like Chicago okay. itself, so I really didn't know them. It was kind of interesting. I was talking about this with Dion that the line was never crossed between the south side and the north side for some reason. You know, back ah. then they, they, you know, they those days they had Master Child. They would have. Uh, uh, Sifu Larry out, yeah. you know, and we, and we would be having, um, you know, Paul Hunak out. And Dion right. was with, uh, actually, my very, very first college class was with uh, Ron Balicki. Okay. That was my another name on, that was another name on. Yeah. The and, yeah. Um, the, it was called the American Martial Arts Academy. And okay. I came there to, after Dion had, uh, you know, disabled my arm, um, <laughs> I, I came to the school because that's where Dion was teaching. Mm -hmm. And I came there I was to, to train with Dion, and uh, he was he wasn't there yet. So the the, the guy who owned the place, uh, uh, Tony Rojas, I believe, mm -hmm. he had told me, you know, if you want to take the college class that's going on. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I went in there, and again, I was just out of my element totally. Yeah. Uh, so that was one of my first experiences with college in the stick in the sticks. So uh, that was through uh, Ron. Mm -hmm. um, and the only reason you know, I never really hooked up with Ron throughout this whole time was just on the timing. There's no, right. yeah. you know, it's just, so yeah. again, someday soon. Culture. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> but that, yeah. that's, that's the thing, you know, I mean, you, in, I grew, I started in Barbados. Okay. So it was just me. Yeah. I, there was yeah. nobody else to, right? There's nobody I could go to. And right. then when I, when I left Barbados, I moved to Miami. And again, okay. it was just me. So there was a, 
right? Nobody to train with. Yeah. yeah. But you guys, yeah. you guys always had um, a, a variety of people that you could mm -hmm. affiliate yourself with. So yeah, it's harder to make a yeah. decision, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to stick to this one person or, or what have you. Um, here's another name for you, Larry Lindenman. I, I know he was uh, Ron's uh, partner, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, I never met him. I've heard okay. like phenomenal things about the man. Yeah. I, I believe he's like up in the western suburbs right now. He's another guy I got to put him on my list. Like, <laughs> me, you know, shake yeah. hands with. Yeah. <laughs> um, and wasn't there in the old days again, um, wasn't there a, oh, there's another person, but I'm going to mess up his name. Joe Gian, Giancomo, is it? Is that how you pronounce it? Joe Goitia? Uh, no. no. Let's see. Who is Randy Joe Siordia? Lam Lam Joe Lamro. Or that's no. Rich Lamro. I'm sorry. Ri yeah, sorry. there's Rich mm -hmm. Lamro. There's, okay. there's Randy Siordia. There's, I thought Joe Giancomo was out of Chicago also. There's Nick Faruqi. Wasn't Nick Faruqi out of Chicago at one time too? Nick, Nick's from like a third generation. He came yeah. a little late, a lot, a lot late with Paul and Tom. He was right. up in uh, Bloomingdale and all that. Yeah, he's from, Randy yeah. was from the, uh, Randy was from our, our, my group. Uh, he came a year after I started. Actually, Randy came, uh, he actually came and took one of my, when I started teaching in 91, yeah. one of his first, he came and uh, was in one of my classes initially. Yeah. I haven't talked to him in forever. He's, he's, he's really attached to uh, Ron's group and right. uh, Mark, ha Mark Halleck up there. Um, but uh, the guy you're talking about, I don't know. I okay. have to see his face. I could, I could do like, I could probably do like three months of Jeet Kune Do <laughs> dialogues with just Chicago people. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of those guys, it's interesting is a lot of those guys stemmed from even like, um, I think you did a seminar at his place, Matt Numerick. Uh -huh. I think you did some seminar there. Yeah. Um, a a right lot of those guys, guy. yeah, a, a lot of those guys all stemmed from DM. Right. Believe it or not. They yeah. all stem, you know, Dean has a lot of credit that a lot of people don't want to, I don't want to say don't want to, that don't realize, you know, he was, you know, he brought Hickson out to the Midwest, I remember. Mm -hmm. He was mm -hmm. one of, he was like Hickson's rep for a while. He brought him out. He was one of, mm -hmm. I think he's the first guy to bring him out in the area, I think. I'm not sure. Right. Uh, one of, at least. Yes. Uh, bringing grappling into the area and things like that. I mean, he did a lot of pioneering stuff that wasn't going on at the time. Yeah. So there's a lot of things that people just don't realize that's, you know, uh, I hear a lot of stuff, you know, business. Yeah, he's a great businessman, but there's a lot of things that he opened up for everybody to, like, go into. Right. You know, so. well, and was it, again, back in the old days, wasn't there some kind of a cooperative where there was, like, four, three or four or five guys who all taught at that place? Do you know what I'm talking and, about? In Chicago. Yeah. What place do you mean? At the American Martial Arts Academy? Is that, is that what it was? Did that have, I, I, I can't remember the name of it, but, okay. it, but from, from what, I, what I think I, I remember, okay. it was one location, okay. and there were like maybe three guys all certified in JKD, and they taught out of that place. No? You know, I don't, the only thing I remember as far as the American Martial Arts Academy go was that uh, it was Ron. Uh huh. And then and then Dion, uh, I don't remember. And then there's a couple of maybe guys who were students that came through. But as far as being on the group, Dan, I think it was just those two. Yeah. Um, the only one I could think of was probably Daggerberg had because he used to. I remember. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I can't. Th I don't know. Okay. I really don't know. It okay. might be one of the suburbs. <clears throat> right. You know. Um. So okay. So now with with that vast, um repository of information right okay yeah what have you what have you done to make it all gel together i'm still working on it okay <laughs> <laughs> no uh yeah no it, it, that's where the balance comes in uh -huh. where it's like I, I i i've kind of found my front line so to speak i think yeah of people i want to train with and all that stuff yeah. And w when you're saying gel, if I'm understanding you correctly, is how do I fit that all in? How do I train it? Or how have I made it my own? Is well, what? yeah, all, all, of, all of the above. See, because okay. it's like I recently spoke with, um, with, with a guy and he says, well, my curriculum is vast because I have stuff 
from Inasano. Mm -hmm. I have stuff from the Kimuras. Mm -hmm. And I forget what his third source was. Right. Okay. And I go, okay, I get that. But stuff from the Kimuras is going to be, let's, say, let's make it simple. It's going to be how to kick and punch. Stuff okay. from Inasano is going to be how to kick and punch. Stuff from <laughs> whoever else is going to be how to kick and punch. How to kick and punch. So yeah. now, all those names that I have called there are pretty much okay. how to yeah. kick and punch, how to grapple, mm -hmm. and how to swing a stick. Okay. Yeah. Right. So right. so the, the, so that that's what I'm trying to. The, do you have a, a technique for bringing it all from these seemingly disparate sources? And doing this to it. What's interesting is that I don't even know, I don't think it's done consciously because there are so many similarities because everybody's lineage comes from Guru Dan. Right. You have Sifu Larry, you have Paul Vunak, you have, uh, now Sifu Fang was lineage, but he's got his own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, and uh, Master Chai, who I haven't, you know, been around that much, is definitely just an you know, on the same level, you know, it's, it's mm -hmm. not the, exactly the same, um, not direct students of Guru Dan, so to speak. Rick Fay, um, there's so many similarities with Rick Fay's Panatukin program and Coach Eric's SDX program. Right. Okay. So yes. when I'm, when I'm teaching it and while I'm teaching it, and let's say we're in the phase one, we're in phase MKG and it's like, okay, here, let's this, this, and this, but tell you what, um, by the way, if you guys remember, we're doing this is in level two of uh, SDX. You know, it's there. You know, I, I will draw into that, but it, I it's, see. it's kind of, it's kind of interesting because I don't necessarily say we're doing CSW today. I mean, I might, but for the most part, I don't necessarily say that. We mm -hmm. just get into it, mm -hmm. and what ends up happening is the similarities just pop out because, like I said, everybody's branched from that. And that's what I really thought was cool about JKD and and Guru Dan's. Uh, uh, whole approach is all of these guys stem from Guru Dan, yeah. yet they're all different. Right. Uh, you, know, you know what I mean? And, and you got Eric Paulson, Paul Gunnick, Sifu Larry, Rick Fay. you know, everybody, they're different. And then the other guys, you know, who never trained with Guru Dan, like Tony Cicchini or uh, John Manos and the other guys, you know, those are, those guys are specialists mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, in, in, in their area. Um, mm -hmm. And in, in the area where I live in Chicago there, uh, they were the specialists to go to in that in my for me for my right opinion. yeah uh you know so that's why uh so it's kind of hard to delineate where because if they all come from each source yeah if that makes sense if yeah I get, I get it, I get it. I get it. okay yeah. okay i you know because i'm always interested in um you know whether or not there are more commonalities or differences in the approaches that we all use in our teaching I think there's a lot more commonalities than we want to realize. I, I personally think, mm -hmm. but I think that I think the goal, though, is to that our instructors want us to do is to sprout out something that's not been brought out yet. That's that interesting. Sense. That's interesting. I don't know. I don't know if that's possible. And I'm not saying inventing something because nobody invents anything. We just kind of rediscover it. Yeah. Um, but Put, bring, putting your own, like Coach Rick, Rick talks about, you know, putting your own stamp on, uh -huh. which somebody like, you know, Eric Paulson has done. Yes. You know, uh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Uh, see, Fuleri did. Uh, Paul Wunak for sure did. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously Rick Faye, Coach Rick has as well. Mm -hmm. I think that's the ultimate, that, if there is an ultimate goal, because uh, there is no end result in anything, but I think that would be it, where it's just like you become your own unique person and, and the own unique unique tree in the forest yeah so to speak you know well yeah i mean somebody asked me uh asked me that the other day and i said to him i go look here's how it works so i'll use your name for example if okay. we do a google search for everybody in in illinois with okay. the name marcus charles let's say we find five people mm -hmm. none of them are going to be you correct right none I of them are going to have your story <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. That makes everybody in the world unique. Yes. Right. Yeah. Everybody in the world has a story. And I think that that's how we can learn. We can learn how to learn from everyone. 
because every mm -hmm. story has a message and yeah. everybody's got their own story. Yeah, and it's interesting with that because I, I just, uh, my uh, uh, Kabbalah teacher just got some award for some book. He rewrote the Talmud or something and mm -hmm. I had him sign the book and he put on there some quote from old Hebrew text about learning. I think you just history. slipped up. I think you, oh. you called it, you called it Kabbalah. Kabbalah, that's the Jewish mysticism class. I, I know, but I, no, I was kidding. I, you, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't refer to it as Kabbalah. Oh, I, I, I can't, I keep going back and forth. I'm sorry. He's going to shoot me. On that one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but anyways, my Jewish mysticism teacher, how about that? <laughs> he, uh, he got an award for that book and he signed, I had him sign it for me and he brought up what you were talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, an old uh, Hebrew uh, quote where the, the rabbis will learn from their students, from their disciples. Yes. And it's interesting because with that situation, but like what you just mentioned, we can learn from anybody or anything. You know, mm -hmm. you could be walking down the street and somebody you don't even know, you see them do something and it's like, wow, I never, you know, they do a nice gesture you know, yeah. there's a guy uh, the other day at the gas station who uh, he, he was um, he, he needed a dollar for a, a, a coke or something, mm -hmm. and the guy that was in, in behind him, you could, he's getting antsy. He wants to go, and this guy's trying to hustle to get a, a coke. You know, if you're in, if you need to hustle to get a coke, you're in trouble. You know what I mean? You, you need right. some help. Yeah. And so this guy just paid the whole thing and just to go. I don't know what this guy was, but obviously he did it because he wanted to go. He didn't want to wait in line. But there's still a little lesson to be taught in that. Mm -hmm. Still help somebody. Yeah. Get over that little hump. Yeah. Just to get a call. Yeah. You know? Um so so combine an interest in spirituality with okay. an interest in combat for me. I had intro to Buddhism over the summer. And there is a gentleman who actually practices JKD in Philadelphia on and off. He used to go to Rick Tucci's place and he said, he wrote a book and I found this out, I was clicking through just how are Buddha, how is Buddhism and martial arts? Because it seems like it's connected somehow because you see it on TV all the time, right? So it's got to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. um, you know, how is that possible? You know, and he uh, wrote a book called Fighting the Buddha, I believe. His name is Jeffrey Mann, M A double -N. Okay. He wrote, he wrote a whole book on this subject and I started reading it and I went through this, and this is one of the reasons I had stopped because I uh, gotten into the hardcore born again Christian movement for a while, mm -hmm. and it was like everything about martial arts was bad. You know, meditation is bad, training martial arts is bad because it's about hurting. It was that whole thing, mm -hmm. um, and then I realized, well, you know, that's not for me. And I'm not saying that that's not right or wrong. It's not right or wrong. It may be right for that individual. Yes. Because they cannot keep, if they start getting into this combative thing, they're going to go out and do all kinds of things they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got, I think I JKD my spirituality because I found to fit my JK, my martial arts into my spiritual development for myself. And I've noticed like, again, taking all these religious classes, uh, religion, different, and I had intro to Hinduism and all these things, that when it all boils down to it, you know, a kick is just a kick and a punch is just a punch. <laughs> yeah. It's all about faith and it's all about what makes you feel good. What I mean, so you can do good for yourself and everybody else. And right. if somebody wants to practice uh, 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 Islam and they're at peace with that, mm -hmm. It's just, as, it's, it's just as good as somebody practicing Judaism, and it's just as good as somebody practicing Christianity. And I don't want to get, I'm not going to get into the hardcore stuff with whoever. If you guys shoot me all these things on my Instant Messenger that I'm going to hell, I'm not answering you. Okay. <laughs> uh, but but, but, but I, I'm being facetious. But yeah. that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. Where, and, uh, you know, Hinduism and Buddhism, all these things, they have their unique abilities, just right. like grappling has its unique ability. And, a certain martial art does, right? But it has a it has a purpose, and well, it's a common purpose. That's what I was going to ask you because yeah. do you see in the world of religion mm -hmm. a similarity in in thought, evolution, 
opinion and what have you to the world of Jeet Kune Do. Yes, I, there is. And it's, it's interesting you brought that up because a lot of these old faiths, uh, we're, we live in an age now where, you know, the LGBT community is coming into their own. Mm -hmm. A lot of these old faiths, including Buddhism, uh, have very, have rule, basically rules that, that kind of go against that principle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but just like JKD is alive and eclectic and just like Kali absorbed things and just keeps growing, mm -hmm. re religions have to do the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, Buddhism, uh, you know, there's things in the old uh, uh, Sanskrit texts of Buddhism where they talk about, you know, when you're having sex, certain orifices and things like that, mm -hmm. um, that kind of angle away from, you know, homosexuality and stuff. But now there's a lot of talk about where, you know, they're starting to find certain things where that may not be the case. Yeah. And I'm not, and I'm not here to get into what's right or wrong or your more moral judgment on life, not right. you personally, but whatever's listening. Right. But the idea of how do we, how does a Christian or how does a Muslim or how does somebody practices Judaism, you know, you have different forms of Jews, progressive Jews, uh, Jews and so on. Mm -hmm. How do they fit these, these, these things in? Mm -hmm. and still maintain the tradition and the faith. And that's the same thing I'm seeing with JKD, because if, if, with the different people that I've trained with, even though a lot of them, almost everybody is, comes from, we're all kind of in the same family. Yeah. Uh, Brazil, like Comprito, he knows Eric Paulson and Greg Nelson only because they trained, um, uh, I forgot his name, up in Minnesota, the, uh, the UFC guy, the real big guy, uh, Brock Lesnar. Okay, that's uh -huh. how they, you know, they got to know Comprito. Uh, okay. But Caprito's not, he's not part of even the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu family that's in within the sound of the Machado brothers and stuff. Right. He's in a yeah. whole different belt, realm. So, yeah. but there's still the similarity there because it's mm -hmm. Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, you know, there's sport and there's, you know, self defense and on and on and on. So, yeah. with religions, different faiths, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, when something gets written down by somebody, it becomes dead, it's limited. Yeah. OK, yeah. you have to go back and figure out where it came from. Yeah. Why was it written? The context it was written in. Right. Okay? And then when you're trying to put some sort of judgment on another individual, and this could be an individual from a martial art. This could be some lifestyle thing, yeah. as long as you're not doing anything illegal. Yeah. Um, you got to pull back and say, well, what, what, are, what businesses are yours? Mm hmm. If you follow my drift, if yeah, you have yeah. an issue with if you have an issue with somebody doing Taekwondo, that's fine. Don't do Taekwondo. Right. OK. <laughs> and if you have an issue with somebody uh, coming into your school telling you Taekwondo is better than Muay Thai. Well, that's a different thing. It's like, hey, look, man, you know, if you feel that way, go to a Taekwondo school. We're not playing that game. Here. Right. You know, back in the back in the day, then you know, things would get handled differently. We don't, you know, hopefully nobody does stuff like that anymore. But yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but in, in, with the resurgence, not resurgence, with the surgence of the LGBT community and abortion, and all these different things that are coming up now in our society, yeah. religions is trying to find a way to stay active and alive without turning away from the foundation of, of the belief. Yeah. And one thing I've noticed for myself is if you got a problem with somebody in the LGBT community, then don't be in the community. Right. You have an issue with it. You feel that they're in your church or in your synagogue or whatever, they shouldn't be there. Well, make your decision what you want to do. OK, if you don't want them there, ask whoever's in authority why this and that and the other thing. And, mm -hmm. and I'll go out on a limb and say it'll probably say to you. Well, why are you judging this person? Right. They're going through their own struggle. Let them yeah. do it. They found haven here. And I'm not yeah. saying struggle in a bad way. I'm saying struggle because they have to deal with yeah. the things that they're dealing with. And I think that with JKD, and I think that's what's great about Bruce Lee, uh, and that's what I brought up in class today, where he was a guy who wanted to overcome the racial prejudice. Exactly. And he did it. He did it not by sitting back and feeling sorry for himself. He right. broke through it. Yes. He made it. Yes. He made everybody, and now yes. everybody talks about it. Yeah. Now, you see, see what you just said there? That's why mm -hmm. I do this show. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you see, that's why I yeah. do this show, because mm -hmm. we've got the incredible, we, we've, we've got people like you, we've got the depth of thought, the depth of analysis, 
but I'm not going to let you off the hook. Okay. Similarities, commonalities, relationship between JKD and politics. You live in Chicago. That's a political hotspot. Oh, no. Did he freeze? Did I freeze? And I just had a, good, a great question for him. All right. Okay, guys, let me, uh, let me try to get, um, let me try to get Mark. Okay, we lost his connection. So uh, I hope you guys are, were enjoying this. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the question was too hot, Bob. And I did, I did, um, I did see your question, Bob. And I was gonna try to uh, to insert it. Uh, so maybe I'll get, I'll get, I'll get him back on. All right, hang on one second, guys. Get away, you. Nope. Okay. All right, that's just more post editing and post for me. All right. How's that? Back? Can you hear me now? I'm got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Uh, Bob, Bob Bergy said that the question was too hot, and that's why, <laughs> that's why we lost it. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> good one, though, but okay. <laughs> so you said you weren't going to let me off the hook on something, and then I lost you. Yeah, yet. so, so um, we talked about relationship between JKD and religion. And I okay. wanted to ask you about relationship between JKD and politics. Okay. Sounds, okay. sounds the same to me. Go yeah, ahead. it is. It, it yeah. is. And, and, and again, we, get, we are in an age where right now we got a very hot political right. thing going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, extremely. Yeah. Um, I, I, I go back to the same thing where we have ground, and that's why I brought it like the LGBT community, which is very, a huge thing here on campus. Mm -hmm. um, it's breaking new ground. Okay. okay? Yeah. And it's allowing for things to, is to show people, hey, look, this is okay. Or, yeah. it, you know, things are okay. It doesn't yeah. have to be. No, no, not again. Not again. All right, more editing work for me. Okay, so we're coming up on almost an hour. So guys, uh, when Marcus comes back on, I'll just do. Okay, oh, all right. So oh, you, you dropped you dropped out you know for like a minute. I'm getting a, somebody called and then it kind of screwed something up. I don't know. Ah, uh, okay. That's what's going on. But anyways, um, okay. Back back to JKD and politics. Yeah, JKD was huge, a huge political thing in the martial art world, if I remember correctly. I came in towards the tail end, but back okay. when I started tr training martial arts, you really didn't go to different schools, so to speak. You were at right. one school, you know, you know, a boxer, you know, Taekwondo, even in, in within a Taekwondo community, one Taekwondo school, from what I understand, did not go train at another Taekwondo school. You know, right. it was just, yes. right? Yeah. Um, where JKD kind of broke that mold. Mm -hmm. And as far as politics go, I think we've regressed in that arena mm -hmm. because we are not accepting, and this is both sides now, I'm not gonna take yeah. a side. Yeah. Both, both sides have equal valid points. Right. On any of these arguments that are going on. Yet, for some reason, one side feels they're right and the other side feels they're wrong. And one side will not allow the other side to have their opinion because they put labels on that opinion mm -hmm. okay yeah. and vice versa vice yeah. versa so right now we have a regression in that and i think that if people would pick up a book on jkd and bruce lee what he did mm -hmm. i think and pull back and really believe in what the country is supposed to do we're supposed to entertain everybody's ideas Right. And find a common ground so everybody can be happy. Right. 
Yeah. Because I'm no, I my my idea may not be right, and neither is yours. But we yes. both we both feel it is. Yeah. And that's the idea of us having a republic, yeah. and that's the idea of JKD. Where you know what, like say Eric Paulson, great, he does everything great, but he's you know he's known as a grappler. Right. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, Guru Dan does everything great. But he's, you know, he's really, you know, everybody knows him for his sticks, right? Yeah. You know, on the outside looking in. Yeah. Uh, Sifu Fong does a lot of great things too, but he's known for Wing Chun. Yeah. Uh, Master Chai, Muay Thai. Yeah. But I've seen him do some pretty cool things with the knife. Yes. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, right. So, exactly. Again, that's, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. No, actually, um, you said something similar to what I say. I say okay. that, that the, America was the first great political experiment, yes. and then Jeet Kune Do was the second. Ah, okay. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Be because I... there never been there never been a, an approach of a democratic republic before mm -hmm. America, correct? And there never there hadn't really been this open mindedness in the martial mm -hmm. art world before Bruce Lee and JKD. Yeah, and I would include Guru Dan in that. Because okay. uh, Guru Dan, Guru Dan, and I'm uh, quoting uh, Coach Rick on this because yeah. Guru Dan and uh, Bruce Lee were partners and okay. they did a lot of, they, you know, it's, you know, Kali, you know, they absorbed all the different uh, arts that came to try to take over the lands there. It kind of a little bit of a similarity there, I think. Yeah. Um, I'm starting to notice that. Uh, but obviously, Bruce Lee, you know, he's was the, the catalyst that started all this right. uh, for us. But I think Guru Dan was the man behind the man in that aspect as well. Mm -hmm. And he's taken that to the level we have now. Okay. You know, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, um, Bob Berge had asked a question earlier about structure for your teaching, whether you were teaching mm -hmm. blend, mm -hmm. what, I think he's, he said uh, blended classes or separate systems or so. I think that's how he, he, he put it. it. It depends on, you know, because I got like two or three days a week. And, okay. you know, I, I will at times try to blend, yeah. but uh, at times I will, like, if I know that Coach Eric's coming out, right. we will take, you know, it'll be just straight, you know, CSW, STX. I see. You know, uh, it I depends, see. You know because he's coming out and, you know, we want to make a good showing for our group type yeah. of thing. Yeah. Um, the, the, the goal eventually is, when I have my own brick and mortar, is to actually have a CSW class. Okay. Which I should because which I should because I'm an affiliate. So if that's right. the leadership yeah. Bob, I got okay. I got you. <laughs> so that is so so that is the goal to to move and get your own place ultimately. Oh yeah, eventually I want yeah. my own brick and mortar. Uh, I was planning on doing it sometime this year. Things okay. didn't work out that way, but that's the goal. Uh, I want to have right. my own place, and I think that's just part of it. And that seems to, from my end, that's the toughest thing to get done. So that's my goal as a yeah. martial artist, JKD guy, to get over that because well, be sure to talk to Dion. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, in martial arts, we have to, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. Yes. And that's why I think it's conducive for everybody to go and take a class at a college and learn something. Cause you're going to get the pulse of what's going to be coming up. Mm hmm train martial arts, get in shape, watch what you eat, but also watch your finances mm -hmm. because that's all, you know, it's how we survive in this world. So right. if you can have, if your finances are set, yeah, you've accomplished another challenge. Yeah. But see, that's mm -hmm. too practical and level headed right there. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Well, yes. it is, it is, it, it is. And you know, it's at the same time, I don't know if being practical and level headed is always a bad thing. Right? right, it can be. Right? Sometimes it's like you know you need to just break all the rules and just go. <laughs> you know, um, but you know, uh, it's it's kind of hard to do if you ain't got the cash to do it. Yeah, you know, and if or you know you got to put money towards other things. But if you could kind of find, I do believe this, and no scientific empirical evidence on this, but uh, and I have to say that because I'm in the college here, but <laughs> uh, but. I do believe that once you have it in your brain about wanting something, the biggest issue that people have in not getting it is because they say they don't have enough time, they don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. 
they may not have enough money at that particular time. Mm -hmm. but if you really want to do something, you're going to figure out a way to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of trying to figure out a way to do it. Okay. I'm, I'm not giving up by saying, well, I don't have the money or the time to open up a gym. Or right yeah. now, I wish I had more time to go train with Sifu Farm. It's not yeah. that I'm saying I can't do it and I'm not going to do it. I'm just trying to get to that point. Yeah. I'm still going pressing forward. You just, you just made me think of, of, of something that I have I've not thought of in a long time. What you were mm -hmm. describing there, what would people say? They would say, oh, such and such is too expensive, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. One time I sat down and I go, wait, pensive. Pensive means thoughtful, mm -hmm. right? Okay. X is the Latin prefix that means out of or away from. So when a thing is too expensive, okay. it's because it's too, it's, it's out of your thought. You're not thinking enough. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, about how, about how to bring it about. There you, I never, wow, that's cool. See, I just learned something today. That's awesome. Yeah, expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, it makes sense because, you know, I, I hear people say, well, you know, this day, well, okay, man, listen, you know, you're giving me an excuse. You just mm -hmm. don't want to do it. And I get it. You don't mm -hmm. want to train anymore. You don't want to spend the money or pay. It's not whatever. The wife's giving you a hard time. Whatever excuse, you know, I, everybody hears. All right, fine. Yeah. All through, when you want, when you push away all through that, you really just don't want to do it. Right. You know, and I've, I've actually called people out on that. And, you know, sometimes they get mad. Sometimes mm -hmm. they would have, you know, um, even myself, it's like at that moment, yeah, you know what? I was supposed to go to go train with coach Eric whenever I'll just bring the, an example mm -hmm. and I get a text from him and hey, you just don't want it. You know what? At that particular moment, probably not. I just didn't want to take that money or that time because something else came up and I chose yeah. to do the other thing. But when the people quit, and they make up all these excuses, they're hurting themselves because they're not being honest with themselves. And right. I think that's the one with Bruce Lee. Uh, and I think that's what's great about the religions, especially the ones that really emphasize the inner self um, or the inner no self. Uh, you got to be honest with yourself. And I, there's an interview I heard where, uh, where Bruce Lee said, that's the hardest thing to do, to be honest with yourself. Right. But if you can get to that point, then you can figure out exactly what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. Yeah. But if you make up, if you put up all these barriers and excuses, you blame your job or you blame your wife or you blame, no, you know what? I was asked to work. I chose to work instead of go train tonight. Or, mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I want to save for a car. Uh, so the money I'm paying for the gym right now, I got to put it towards the car. All right, that's fine. I, I respect that for you. But try to figure out another way where you can get the car and still train. And still train, yes. Yeah, so how about yeah. taking it to that level? Mm -hmm. Unless you don't want to train. That's right. a whole different ballgame. And not everybody has to train. Yeah. They should. Right. No, I'm just <laughs> well, <laughs> like, like Rick Faye says, everybody has a right to learn this art. Right, exactly, you know? yeah. yeah. Um, exactly. And, and the one thing going back to the political thing, it's really interesting because – in JKD, the freedom of exploring, there's also a freedom of not wanting to explore. And there's also a freedom of saying to yourself, it's your body, it's your life, it's your choice. If, right. I, choose, if I choose not to accept this particular group in politics, so to speak, you know what? That's your right. You've got a right not to choose that. Mm -hmm. The only right you don't have to do is to infringe the other person's right to disagree with you. Exactly. Yeah that's where the issue comes in. And I think that's like with Bruce Lee, where, you know, he was told not to teach to whoever, you know, uh, I understand the certain aspect of it, but you could still maintain your political views if you really truly have true belief in what you're saying and it's not motivated by something else. Mm -hmm. um, and yet make a compromise with an opposing group. Because the only reason you won't compromise, in my opinion, is because your ego is not letting you do it. Because right. you think you're right. Yeah. I wrote a paper about this called absolutism. Okay. The only absolute out there is there is no absolute. Because things, <laughs> change, things change every single day. They right. could come out with data and stats. I don't know like, I don't know if anybody out there is a stats person. But they come out with data. There's all this data that comes out every day. Pro and against everything political. That kind of, if you pull back for a second and think about that, hmm, you know what? Why did it change all of a sudden? 
So what is stats then? So what is that data? Is that the be all end all? Of course not. It's a tool no. to help you figure something out. Because right. that stat, my one statistics teacher, I hope he's listening, Professor Mike Bailey, he said, I don't know if anybody knows about stats, but they, he goes, you never accept the null hypothesis. You just fail to reject it with the current data that you have at the time. <laughs> that spoke volumes to me because that means to say that right now, even though a punch is a punch and a kick is just a kick, yeah. the methods that, that we have right now are working for us. But that doesn't mean that somebody's methods that are coming around the corner are not right. going to improve, are not going to improve that yet. Yes. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what that tells me. That's the idea. And I think in, in JKD, you know, what Bruce is trying to do is try to say, look, your art is great, but your art is not the best. There is no best art out there. It's only the best mm -hmm. for you for you as a yeah. person, your own personal development under certain circumstances. And that's the same thing with political views. Mm -hmm. Your political view at this point is you feel is the way to go. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But if you don't leave an opening to allow yourself, hey, maybe this other person has a certain viewpoint that, you know, kind of makes sense. Yeah. Then you can open up. And then what ends up happening is you bridge this gap and then you can talk to each other. Right. And then if you can at least have a common ground where, you know, this guy's all right. Oh, this guy's all right. We don't mm -hmm. agree. There's a friend mm -hmm. of mine. Um, I, hope he's I hope he's listening. I won't mention his name. Me and him go back and forth all the time on politics. But we <laughs> both say to we, we, we go back and forth all the time. But we both say to each other that we respect our approach to it and how we're willing to listen to each other. Right. Well, that's, that's pure JKD. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's not hap that doesn't seem to be happening in our political world right now. Right. Maybe, yeah, well, but yeah, I, I, whatever. Yeah, may, I mean, you know, well, like, yeah. May, yeah, maybe, but, maybe we can teach them something uh, in the JKD world and they can bring it into the political world. Who knows? Well, maybe, maybe they'll call us up for uh, yeah, into the White House and have a little, yeah, there you go, little, yeah, fireside chat, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't well, right. be cool? Yeah, all right, listen, spoken like a true JKD philosopher, Marcus Charles. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking the time to do this. I wish you the best of luck. Uh, Thank you. you. Posted on the brick and mortars thing. I'll be very interested yes. in knowing how, how that uh, goes for you. All right. Thank you. Also, okay. real quick, everybody. Uh, I got Coach Rick out at the end of February. So guys, come on in. I got room. You know, come on in. Okay. 75 bucks. 75 bucks for the two days. Come on in and have a MarcusCharles.net, correct? Yes. MarcusCharles.net. You'll see it up there and you can register right there. All right. Very cool. Thank you. All right. Thank Thanks you. Thanks again, man. Okay. okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Another cerebral one made, made, me, made me think a lot of um, all of the, the, the JKD philosophers who are out there. All right. So that was it, uh, guys. Episode number 47 of the Jikundo Dialogues with uh, Marcus Charles of MKG uh, Chicago. Um, yeah, that's it for today. So feel free, share, like, comment, ask questions. I'll go through, because I saw um, your, your guys' uh, comments and questions. I'll go through everything and uh, do some post-editing. Uh, uh, sign up for notifications for when we go live on Facebook and when we post the finished product up on the YouTube. Um, I love Jeet Kune Do, Quick Skills uh, Series Volume 1, still available. Uh, show your support for the programming. Make a purchase at jkdrebel.com forward slash store. Next uh, JKD Dialogues will be uh, fr February, next Friday, February 15th. Um, it might be a twofer, episode 48 and 49. Uh, with Robert uh, Parmakovsky out of Australia. And then we're going to have a repeat with uh, Richard Torres out of New York. Uh, Richard and I uh, got to talking again, and uh, we think that, that, that um, having a, a, devoting some time to, to Bruce Lee and um, his business approach to JKD will be uh, worthwhile. So the times for next Friday's two for um, dialogues are still to be determined, so just keep your eyes on um, Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, where else? YouTube, I guess. Right? Okay, guys, thank you very much. And gals, sorry. Thank you very much. I'll see you back here next week for another episode of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogues. This is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel, signing off. Take care. Enjoy your weekend.